What is up everybody? Well, wouldn't you know it, Oktoberfest is cancelled again. And I've never had any real personal connection to Oktoberfest myself, but any excuse to drink an extra beer and hunt down a soft pretzel sounds like a good time to me. As it turns out, making really great pretzels is actually kinda tricky and involves some supplies that you probably don't have at home. Now you would think that that would stop me from making this video, but instead it sent me down a deep rabbit hole with far too many German YouTube videos, a throwback to high school chemistry, and a brief Amazon search for some budget corrosives, which we will not be using in this video. But let's just start making these things and I'll show you some of the things that I learned that led me to pretzel perfection as we go. Like an yeast of dough, I first started out by blooming my dry active yeast. So into a mixing bowl, I added one cup of warm water and a quarter cup of brown sugar. Mixed that together and added two and a quarter teaspoons or one packet of dry active yeast and set that aside until it was nice and foamy on top. Then I added 188 grams of all-purpose flour, 20 grams of warm butter, and half a teaspoon of salt. And then using a wooden spoon, I just gave that a nice little mixy mix until it was just a really thick batter. This really helped get the butter incorporated right off the bat and gives a good starting point for getting all that brown sugar and yeast throughout. Then I added my other half or another 188 grams of all-purpose flour and I kneaded that by hand for about 10 minutes until it was nice and silky. You could do this in a mixer for about 5 minutes, but my, my kids are sleeping. Then I tossed that into a lightly greased bowl and let it sit for about an hour in a nice warm spot until it was nice and doubled in size. While my dough is resting over there, let's talk pretzel chemistry real quick. Traditionally, pretzels are dipped in a lye bath before being baked to help break down some starches and help promote a good Maillard reaction, get some good browning and some really great flavor in the dough. Now, lye on a pH scale is somewhere around 13. I don't know how long ago high school was for you, but the higher end that we're taught about is 14. So it would probably not shock you to find out that generally you can't buy this stuff at the grocery store. Well, you can, but it's mostly sold as oven and drain cleaner and you don't want that in your pretzels. If you're really serious about making pretzels, you can buy this stuff on Amazon, but it is pretty expensive. And who really wants dangerous chemicals sitting around the rest of the time when they're not making pretzels? So most home bakers have found a way that they can use a really concentrated baking soda solution boiling on the stove to get kind of the same effect of browning in their pretzels. Now, I gave this a shot and it took a ton of baking soda. It made an awful mess on my stove. It didn't really brown the pretzels properly or give them that distinct pretzel flavor. And the taste that it did give them was pretty awful. On top of that, boiling the pretzels after they'd already been proofed kind of deflated them and they never really came back and rose properly afterwards. Now, after this first attempt, I was so disappointed. I almost gave up on this video, but like I said already, I instead went down a deep rabbit hole and found out that you can actually use a different chemical that you can buy at the grocery store and also you can make at home. It's called sodium carbonate and it's about 10,000 times more corrosive than baking soda, but only a tenth as corrosive as lime, making it a mild irritant at worst. To make sodium carbonate or washing soda, the first thing we're going to do is grab a sheet tray and line it with parchment paper. Please do not use aluminum foil for this. And then taking care to weigh how much baking soda we're putting on our tray, unlike this demonstration here, we're just gonna pour a nice layer of baking soda onto that parchment paper. Then we're gonna to toss that in the oven for two to three hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and we can give this a nice little gentle stir about halfway through to make sure that it's cooking evenly, but make sure to not get this stuff on you, it is still a bit of an irritant. After about two to three hours, we're gonna pull it out of the oven, and then using our parchment paper to kind of act as a bit of a funnel, we're gonna pour this into a plastic container. When it's done, it should weigh about one third less than the baking soda did when it first went in. Now, even though that took two hours, suddenly our dough has been sitting for exactly one hour. It's nice and proofed and doubled in size, so we're going to punch that down and plop it out onto our unfloured table, where we will divide it into 12 equal-ish pieces. Then we'll ball each of those up and just let them rest for 5 to 10 minutes to relax. At which point we're going to come back, squish them flat, 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 all the way flat, get the air out, and then casually roll it up into almost like a mini baguette. Pinch the seams together and we're going to set these aside for another 10 to 15 minutes to just let them rest and relax. Then we're going to come back and starting just outside of the middle, so we have a nice big bulge in the middle, we're going to start rolling these out into nice long strings, roughly 20 inches. If you find that your dough keeps springing back too much, let it keep resting, it's just not relaxed enough yet. Now you could shape your pretzels by just laying it out, forming it into a U, folding them over each other, and bring it back on itself. Or you could attempt some fancy flippy shit that you saw in a German pretzel video and see how that goes for you. Clearly, 
I'm not really getting it, but it does make the process pretty fun. It's a fun little thing to practice and it kind of looks cool when you actually do pull it off. Then I'll transfer that over to a sheet pan that I've sprayed with non-stick spray and we can proof these with some grease plastic either in the fridge overnight or for about an hour on the counter. Once our pretzels are proofed and we're ready to start baking them, we're going to preheat our ovens to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to mix together our sodium carbonate dip. Now just before we start dipping and baking these things, I just really quickly want to point out that you do want to give some thought into what you let this stuff drip on. While it isn't anywhere near as corrosive as lye, you should still try to avoid glass, aluminum, wood, and of course your skin. So I threw a kitchen towel down under everything I was doing and used stainless steel bowls and utensils. Stainless steel is totally fine and you should absolutely use parchment paper or a silicone mat on your baking trays as well. For my sodium carbonate mixture I waited until my tap water was at its absolute hottest and then added two cups to a mixing bowl along with four tablespoons or a quarter cup of my washing soda. Just to be on the side of safety, we're gonna put the water in the bowl first. This can be a bit of a safety issue with lime, but I don't think it's really an issue with the sodium carbonate. Then I whisked that together until it was completely dissolved. This did take a little bit of time. It took about three minutes, but we're just waiting for our ovens to preheat anyway, so whatever. Then I gently picked up each pretzel and put it first face down for 30 seconds in the dip. Carefully flipped it over with a slotted spoon and let it do another 30 seconds on the back. Picked it up again with my slotted spoon, let it drip off, and then placed it nicely on my parchment lined baking sheet. You can use your slotted spoon to kind of try and reshape this into a pretzel, but honestly, I used my fingers and it was okay. Just rinse your hands after. This stuff is not that dangerous. Once they've all been dipped for 30 seconds on each side each, I mixed together one egg with one tablespoon of water, brushed each of my pretzels pretty generously with my egg wash, sprinkled them up with some nice salt, and tossed them in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes depending on your oven. And then completely forgot to press record before I pulled them out. But hey look, pretzels. Cool, eh? Just a little bit of crisp on the outside. They got a really nice, soft, fluffy interior. These ones you can see are a little bit more wrinkly. They're not quite as smooth. I did some on the countertop with a shorter proof. They were a little bit fluffier. They were a little less wrinkled, but there wasn't quite as much depth to the flavor of the bread. On the other hand, they did look a lot nicer. The one thing I do regret is I didn't think to make a beer and cheese dip to go with it, but I did have this beer mustard sit in the fridge. It's a nice sweet mustard. It went really well with the saltiness of the pretzel. I would probably make these again. They really were not all that difficult once I knew what the hell I was doing, but it won't be anytime soon because I do have a couple dozen pretzels sitting in my freezer as we speak. Ideally, you're going to want to eat these fresh. They have a tendency to get really weird looking after a day or two, especially if you salted them, but they do still taste really great regardless. Of course, if you want to make a bunch for later, you can bag them up and freeze them while they're still fresh, but I would definitely suggest not putting salt on if you're going to do this until after, and then maybe brush them with butter once they're thawed, and you can bake them again with some salt on top. That's about all I got for this one though. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, or if you learned something, be sure to let me know in the comments, hit the like button, and consider subscribing. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.